Hare Krishna, I'm Priti Kula and you're watching Hare Krishna Culture. We start today's program with a continuation of last week's clip when Srila Prabhupada was visiting Melbourne in Australia. It's a really beautiful, interesting piece. My favourite is when a devotee recalls being on a morning walk with Srila Prabhupada. He wanted to get the dust of Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet. So he kept looking for his footprints on the grass and he couldn't find them. He then bent down further to catch Srila Prabhupada's step and in amazement he noticed that Srila Prabhupada left no footprint on the grass. Now listen carefully to the rest of that story. You could see the, the city from the distance and there were buildings and I, I can't remember exactly his question but it was something to, along the lines of why do they build these big buildings? And being somebody who was always a little bit in awe of architecture, I remember saying something like, well, they like to be remembered, you know, um, from doing some big construction. I guess that's a sort of the fault of an artist anyway, isn't it? You do a painting or leave something behind. And Prabhupada said, that's exactly the same as the washerman's donkey. He likes to be known for being able to carry some big load. It's just no different. Yeah, the washerman's ass. I remember thinking then, hmm. I was working at the time as a designer and an artist. and I had a job in a TV studio here in Melbourne. Prabhupada sort of dismissing so-called lofty aesthetics of contemporary architecture. The mode of passion, I guess it is, isn't it? You know, you're... You like to work in the mode of passion and leave something behind that you'll be known for. But yeah, Prabhupada's perspective sort of cut through it. All of us would just pile up. advertising a new book about the evolution of man and they were saying that there was approximately two million varieties of life on this planet. This was the calculation of the scientists. Two million? Mm -hmm. No. Eight million. All right. <laughs> you were saying the other day that all the species of life were mentioned in the Padma Purana. Yeah. So I'll give an account of it. The total oh, yeah. the approximation. An estimate. The evolution from ape to man. They've given one drawing of uh, a species looking like a man, uh, but much like an ape. This, and they're claiming this is right, they've got this type of personality was existing. It's a distinguishing characteristic that makes one different from another. You have not seen varieties on that? Yes. Huh? Is, it, is it divided by country or within one country there are many species? You are taking up country, but it's the taste of the planets. Hmm. Part of the country. Your idea is very simple. Country. National. Shastra is not, there is no such thing as national. They take the whole universe as a whole. <coughs> they consider from that angle of this. This idea, state, national, has come later. No such thing. <coughs> One planet or universe, like. That's why the last time the God was astonished yeah, how this planet can be governed by one king. 
it was being actually done. And the whole universe is being governed by Brahma, one person. So one must know how to govern. You can see Śrīla Prabhupāda, by the, by the distribution of wealth and minerals in each loka, in each planet, that is meant to be governed by one, by one ruler. In one place there is gold, in one place uh, grains grow. Is this true? Yeah. Everywhere there is everything. Maybe proportionally different quantities. All the other demigods, like their departmental heads, so he's not personally directing every single thing. Yeah, he is given in charge. It's like we have got different divisions for different jobs. Similarly. They are doing their duty nicely. All these planets are the different uh, <coughs> residential quarter, different living room. They are controlling the whole universe. In comparison to them, the human being is nothing. Just like uh, difference between Western country and India, uh, India has a very quick chance of realization of God. The atmosphere is so nice. So this planet is good for God realization and the best place is in India. By the rains, all good things come, and rains come because of good jagna. So, in this planet, everybody is meat eating. In this country, everybody is performing sinful activities. The rain activities. is decreasing. The more you are becoming sinful, the rain will decrease. So it is decreasing now. Yeah, and at the end, there will be no rain. The, this whole planet will be a place with fire. That is the beginning of destruction. If it rains uh, during daytime and at night you see the stars, then you should know there will be scarcity of rain. There will be scarcity of rain and scarcity of wood grains. The best thing is at night there must be heavy rain and daytime there should be sunshine. Then the uh, field will be very fertile. That is knowledge. But they have no knowledge. They simply want to and die. They do not care for death also. Uh, simply sense care. This is called dhanam, dhanam life. They said from recent discoveries the fossils and like this. That's all right. The calculation. Uh, why there are varieties? They say originally there was just a, a cell, and by adaptation, in some circumstances, one kind would live and another would die. So all these varieties adapted to different conditions. Who adapted? Well, they just Who managed? Accidentally. Uh, that is nonsense. Nothing happens accidentally. That is nonsense. There must be some arrangement. What is happening at this accident? Well, I say why, why you are taking care of the trees? So many things. Nothing is done accident. You do not see the cause. Let accidentally money come and sit down. Why do they not do that? If accident is there, let accident come and I'll become rich man. Why they try? Why they go to the college? Let it ac accidentally become a PhD. This is all rascal. There are five causes. Activity, the place, 
the uh, proportion of energy and ultimately sanctioned by God. Then things happen. Otherwise, there is no question of accident. We were reminded once again of Śrīla Prabhupāda's transcendental shakti. Even in this advanced age, he walked very briskly during his morning walks, where most of the devotees found it very difficult to keep up with him.